Hello, my name is Stuart Hamblin. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I've had a lot of fun teaching this particular lesson to my students via Zoom this week and I thought I'd share it with you. Please begin by lying down on your mat and if possible stretch out the legs to begin but if having the legs long for any period of time causes you, causes you discomfort then of course feel free to change the position of the legs. But just take a moment to notice how you're lying in, into the floor and bring your attention to where you're resting on the back of the head. What point are you resting on? And then begin to follow in your mind's eye the line of your spine from the back of the head down towards the tailbone. You're just exploring the curves of your spine. So for everybody, the spine will begin to come away from the spine in the area of the neck or the cervical spine. So as you follow the line of the spine down in the area of the neck, just discover for yourself the shape of the curve of the cervical spine, where its highest point is and then follow the line of the spine down until you discover the next part of the spine that actually makes contact into the floor. So for many people that will be between the area of the shoulder blade, some will be higher, some, some lower. And then continue to um, discover the parts of the spine that are actually in contact with the mat and then identify the next part of the spine where you begin to come away from the mat, which would be the curve of the lumbar spine. Again, just noticing the highest point of that curve. So for some people it will be much higher uh, and um, for others it will be lower. And then discover the next part of the spine that makes contact with the floor. So for some two that will be near your belt line if you are wearing a belt, but for others it will be more towards the tip of the tailbone. So you're just trying here to get an overall impression of the shape of the curves of your spine and the lengths of those curves. And once you've formed that imp impression, then just ask yourself, how, how is your weight distributed around the sides of the, of the spine? So are you perhaps slightly more weighted into one side of the ribs compared to the other? Is the pelvis tilted more to one side compared to the other? Perhaps your, your two shoulders are a little bit asymmetric, one shoulder being slightly more forward than, than the other one. And the idea of these questions is not to try and correct anything at this stage, but it's just to give you um, a, a sense of where you are as we begin the lesson so that you have something to compare to as we, as we end the lesson. Now, once you've just thought about those things, please bring your legs to standing. And when you bring the legs to standing, have them a comfortable distance apart. And you've probably realised that for most people, when they bring the legs to standing, it just releases something in the area of the lower back. In other words, that curve of the lumbar spine has changed as a result of bringing the legs to standing. And certainly for me, I can feel now that more of my back is releasing down into the floor. And I'm also just going to take a little pad behind the back of my head because without the pad, what tends to happen is the head tilts back, which would mean a shortening in the, in the cervical spine. But also, if you're looking at, my, at the screen, these middle to lower ribs um, tend without any support underneath the head to push up towards the ceiling. So just by having a little bit of support underneath the back of the head, it allows me to lengthen the neck and also these ribs, these ribs to soften a little bit 
And that means, again, that more of my back begins to rest down in, into the floor. Now, once you've made any adjustments you need to do, please imagine you have a clock painted on the back of your pants. 12 o'clock is towards the head and 6 o'clock towards the feet. And this clock is about the size of a large orange. And then could you begin to press down into both feet so as to roll your pelvis a little bit towards the head, towards 12 o'clock. And then you think of the feet becoming light to help return the pelvis to its starting position. So pressing down into the feet to roll the pelvis to 12 o'clock. And then you release the effort underneath the feet to return the pelvis. Now, something just to be careful here, even with such a simple movement, is when you push down into the feet, you are actually pushing down, not pushing the feet away from you. Um, uh, I, I say that because I noticed in class this week that some people were just pushing um, that way, down in the direction of the feet, and all that was doing was pushing their spine up and down. It wasn't necessarily causing the lower back to come closer to the floor. So I, I'm pushing right down into the floor to help my lower back curl towards the floor to that 12 o'clock position. Now, once you've got used to using the legs to help, think also of your lower tummy. So, um, I mean by that an area about two inches below the navel where my finger is pointing. I'm pulling in that area as I press into the feet to help use my abdominal muscles to bring the lower back closer to the floor and the um, the pelvis to that 12 o'clock position and then when I release the feet let them become light I think of pushing that lower tummy area out and down towards the pubic bone and when I do that again it helps the lower back muscles to engage to arch the lower back and bring the tip of the tailbone down towards that six o'clock position so just to explore again a few more times, pressing down into both feet as you pull in that spot two inches below the navel, and then you release the effort underneath the feet to push the lower tummy out and down towards the pubic bone. Now, uh, it's, it's important that you don't be shy about trying to, first of all, pulling in that area two inches below the navel, and then um, pushing it out. Again, something I see in class is that uh, as a substitute for that, people will push out and pull in the diaphragm area um, as a substitute for actually engaging this area below the navel. So just notice, is your tendency to try and do this with the diaphragm area or are you actually pulling in and pushing out that, that lower tummy area. So just a few more 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock movements. And then pause and let's make the right hip 3 o'clock on our clock and the left hip 9 o'clock. Could you begin to press down into both feet and pull in your tummy to go to 12 o'clock and then try from 12 o'clock, could you go round to 1 o'clock to the right, to 2 o'clock, to 3 o'clock. So the right side of the pelvis is slightly heavy, the left side is light. And then try to come back to 2 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 12 o'clock, so lower back down. And then continue round to 11, 10 nine o'clock so the left side of the pelvis is heavy the right hip is slightly lifted and come back to 10 11 and 12 and go round to one 
two, three, and again just back to two, one, twelve, and again round to eleven, ten, and three. Just do a few more of these in your own time, just seeing which hours are quite clear for you, and perhaps which less so. And as you're doing it, just notice, are you tending to tilt the knees left and right to try and make this clock? And if, if that is the case, ask yourself whether you need to tilt the knees. Um, if you're able to keep the knees fairly quiet looking towards the ceiling, it means that you're, you're then finding a differentiation of the pelvis from, from the legs. Now pause, come back to centre, just take a rest for a moment, either the up hands on the tummy or down by your side, and then just roll the head and eyes a little bit from one side to the other, just to see how it is to do that. And once you've then done that, bring both your legs back to standing. And, uh, have the hands on the tummy with the elbows down by your side and see, could you begin to bring your right shoulder forward and then let it release back towards the floor. So keeping the elbow down, can you just bring your right shoulder forward and then release it back down? As you're bringing the right shoulder forward, you're aiming it a little bit towards the left side of the pelvis as if it's going on a diagonal towards the left side of the pelvis and then as you release it really try and let go of the movement so that the shoulder begins to release back towards the floor so you're just bringing the right shoulder forward and letting it release back towards the floor as you're doing just this simple movement, see if you can keep the jaw nice and relaxed and the breath nice and easy. And you'll perhaps um, discover, certainly for me, it's easier to bring the shoulder forward if I exhale, breathe out, and inhale to let it release back towards the floor. And the, the reason why, for me, it's easier, if I'm breathing out, as I let that shoulder come forward in a diagonal towards the left side of the pelvis, it means that these ribs, where my hands are, have the opportunity to soften with the out-breath. Um, again, it's very common for these ribs that I'm showing with my hands to the front to the front of the body and lower down to be very held, very held for all sorts of reasons, but they're, they're held. And so if I, try, if I hold them and try and bring the shoulder forward, the shoulder doesn't come nearly as far. It comes up against this brick wall of the, of the ribs, where if I allow myself to breathe out as I bring the shoulder, and those ribs to soften out of the way, I can feel, and hopefully you will too, that as the shoulder is coming away from the floor, some other part of my back is pressing down into the mat. In other words, I'm allowing my middle to fold and be part of this movement of the shoulder coming forward. Now pause. Bring your attention to your left shoulder and see can you bring the left shoulder forward, aiming it in a diagonal towards the right side of the pelvis and then you let it come back down. So left shoulder forward towards the right side of the pelvis and then you let it come back down. Trying to keep the elbow down, so differentiating the movement of the shoulder from the elbow and again, just exploring how if you can do this on the out breath and allow the ribs to soften, you'll, you can feel how as the shoulder is becoming light, uh, uh, different parts of your back are pressing down into the, into the mat. 
So in bringing the shoulder forward, I'm not trying to roll myself over to the right. Far from it, I'm actually discovering what part of my middle, my back, can press down into the floor. Now pause. If you need to take a rest, then please take a, take a rest. But otherwise, bring your attention back to the right shoulder and once more begin to lift it towards the left side of the pelvis and see can you bring the left side of the pelvis closer to the right shoulder and then release. So it's as if there are two pieces of string, one on the shoulder, one on the hip, the left side of the hip, and I'm trying to tie those two pieces of string together in front of me to bring the shoulder and the hip towards each other. But again, as, as that diagonal, that, that distance between the right shoulder and the hip is shortening in front of me, I'm trying to discover a diagonal of me pressing down into the mat um, corresponding to that di diagonal in the in the front. Good. Now pause and then see if you can do the same with the opposite diagonal. So left shoulder coming forward towards the right side of the pelvis and the right side of the pelvis coming towards the left shoulder and then release. So left shoulder forward towards the right side of the pelvis and the right side of the pelvis towards the left shoulder. So again, you're discovering your ability to fold in your middle so those two points come closer together. Um, but it's, it's much more I would encourage you to think about how you can coordinate your abdominals, your ribs, your breath to flatten, for want of a better word, a diagonal of pressure into the, into the mat. Good. And then pause, leave it alone and take, take a rest. And when you come to rest, just notice how your back is making contact into the floor, whether you feel maybe a little bit um, more spread into the, into the floor. And then please pause, bring your legs back to standing. And then please fold your left leg in towards you and bring your left hand either onto the head of the shin or if it's more comfortable for you, have it behind the back of the thigh. So left hand behind the back of the thigh or on the head of the shin. Now, please try and keep, to the degree that you're able to, your left thigh vertical. So the knee is pointing up towards the ceiling. And then bring your right hand behind the back of the head. So right hand behind the back of the head. Lift the elbow a little bit towards the ceiling. And then could you begin to lift the elbow towards the knee and then come back down. So good idea to do this on a breath out. So allow yourself to take a full breath in from the tummy to the middle part of the chest all the way up towards the collarbones. And as you breathe out, see if you can bring the elbow towards the knee. Now, they don't have to get anywhere near each other, near each other, and then you release the head and shoulders back down. If you can, though, resist the temptation to pull the knee towards the elbow. So you're trying to keep the thigh looking towards the ceiling. So you take a breath in, and as you breathe out, you're trying to bring the elbow in the direction of the knee, but not the knee towards the elbow. And if you're able to do that, 
you'll notice it's a very similar movement to the one that we just explored. In other words, for the elbow to approach the knee, the right shoulder comes forward, but I'm, I'm not thinking about how high I can get with the elbow, I'm thinking about how much can I fold in my middle so those two points come closer together. So just do one or two more. And just be careful about the head and the eyes. So I'm not trying to look at the knee. I'm letting my head and eyes look where it seems most natural. And for me, because of the hand position, that means I'm looking off to the left somewhere. Whereas if I try and look at the knee as I'm doing this, the eye movement will make it more difficult, more difficult. Good. Now, pause, leave it alone. Again, just take a rest if you need to. And then once you have rested, um, again, uh, I'm only having brief rest, because otherwise the video will be far too long. But if you need more rest, then please take the time by pausing the video. This time, could you bring your right knee in towards you and have the right hand either around the head of the shin or behind the back of the thigh, whichever is easiest for you. Bring the left hand behind the back of the head and then take a good breath in to begin with. Always a good breath in, into the tummy, into the chest. As you exhale, can you begin to bring the elbow towards the knee and then you release the head and shoulders back down. But resist, if you can, the temptation to pull the knee in. So you take a breath in, as you breathe out, you're aiming the elbow towards the knee. So the reason I ask you to keep the thigh looking towards the ceiling you see, if I pull the thigh in and then think it's about bringing the elbow towards the knee, it means I'm not, I'm avoiding using my middle and my chest and my abdominals to do this movement. So I'm trying to keep the knee looking towards the ceiling. Take a breath in. As I breathe out, I'm trying to aim the elbow towards the knee but not necessarily to touch and then come back down so again it's this is really about how you can fold in the middle in the middle not so much to come away from the floor but to feel what can press down into the floor as a result of the movement in the of the of your abdominal muscles so, and so as i lift the head to bring the elbow towards the knee i can feel more weight going down into the floor in my middle in other words my back is beginning to sink down into the floor pause please don't do too many of these as you'll discover as the progressions become more interesting and more fun. <laughs> um, it, this is quite intense work on your stomach muscles and your abdominal muscles. So just take a moment to rest and then please roll the head and eyes a little bit from one side to the other. Good. When you have rested and um, rolled the head, bring the legs back to standing. And then bring your right leg back in towards you. This time, have the, the right hand behind the back of the thigh or the back of the knee. And to the degree that you, the left leg is standing, to the degree that you are able to, lengthen the right leg up towards the ceiling. So, um, some of you may be much more flexible, able to have a straight leg. You don't have to have a, a completely straight leg, but you're just trying to lift the foot up towards the ceiling as far as you comfortably can. And again here, resist, if you can, the temptation to pull the leg in towards you. So you want to try, imagine this is a standing leg on the ceiling. And then turn your 
face to the right and the back of the head to the left. In other words, face to the right, back of the head to the left, and bring your left hand behind the back of the head. So my right ear is resting in my left palm or my left fingers, and then point the left elbow a little bit towards the ceiling. Take a good breath in, and as you breathe out, try and bring the elbow towards the knee, and then you release back down. So you're trying to keep a long right leg, avoiding, resist, avoiding the temptation to pull the leg in. You take a breath in, as you breathe out, you're trying to bring the elbow, the left elbow, in the direction of the knee, but you stay looking to your right with the head. So, trying to bring the elbow towards the knee and then back down. So again, this is all about your ability to fold, fold in the middle, to allow the ribs to soften. So if you notice, I'm not trying to go over, over to the to the right in that way. I'm thinking of this diagonal shoulder coming forward, ribs softening. So the middle middle release is down into the floor. Good. Now pause. Take a rest. <laughs> Make sure you're breathing as you're resting. You're taking full breaths in, full breaths out. And then if you are ready to continue, bring your left leg in towards you. Uh, bring the left hand behind the back of the thigh or the back of the knee. Lift the leg up towards the ceiling to the degree that you can without strain. Bring, turn your face to the left and the back of the head to the right. Bring your right hand behind the back of the head. Take a breath in. So you let yourself always take that breath in as a preparation. And as you exhale, see, can you lift the elbow, the right elbow, towards the right knee? Now, again, not to touch the knee. It doesn't have to get anywhere near touching. But the direction of the elbow is towards the knee. And then you release it back down. So you'll appreciate that we're exploring again that diagonal right shoulder coming forward, but a diagonal of pressure down into the mat. mat. If you're allowing the ribs to soften, the breath to be easy, and the jaw to be relaxed. Good. And then pause, don't do too many, and take a rest for a moment. Once you're, uh, as you're resting, again, okay, just notice the length and shape of the curves of the spine and how you're organised around those curves. And then please bring the legs back to standing. Once more, bring your right leg in towards you. Uh, bring the right hand behind the back of the thigh or the back of the knee. And to the degree that you can, lengthen the leg towards the ceiling. Turn your face to the right and the back of the head to the left. Bring your left hand behind the back of the head to support the head. And this time, could you lengthen your left leg on the floor? So you lengthen the left leg. Now again, can you take a good breath in to prepare, and as you breathe out, once more try and bring the elbow towards the knee, the left elbow towards the right knee, and then you release back down. But this time, as you, tr as you explore bringing the elbow to the knee, press your left leg down into the floor. Press the heel down into the floor, the left heel, the back of the left knee, the back of the left thigh, the whole of the leg into the floor. And again, you're trying to resist the temptation to pull the right leg in. As you fold the elbow together towards the knee, press the left leg down. 
And just note, ask yourself the question, is it easier to bring the elbow towards the knee with the left leg long and pressing down? Now pause, just bring the left leg back to standing again and try again to bring the left elbow towards the right knee a few times, looking to the right, using the breath. And and, uh, and see, again, is it, is it easier to have the leg bent or straight? Straighten the left leg again. And my, my discovery is it's slightly easier for me to bring the elbow towards the knee with that left leg long and pressing down into the floor. Pause and take a rest for a moment. So, again, you know, I just remind you of my note of caution. This is strong, this lesson is a great lesson for improving the action of your abdominals, your flexor muscles, but it's important to um, not overdo and um, not turn it into an exercise. It's, it's much more beneficial if you treat each variation as a question, as a question. In other words, how you're organising the movement as opposed to just trying to achieve the movement. Please bring your legs back to standing. Fold this time your left leg in towards you. Bring the left hand behind the back of the thigh or the back of the knee. Turn your face to the left and the back of the head to the right. Bring your right hand behind the back of the head, around the side of the head. And could you lengthen your left leg comfortably towards the ceiling and then stretch out your right leg long on the mat. You take a breath in and as you breathe out, try to bring the elbow towards the knee. And as you do that, press the right leg down actively into the mat. So as you're trying to bring the elbow towards the knee, you're pressing the right leg down into the floor. Now, again, be careful as you lift the elbow that you're not just trying to take the elbow over to the, to the side, which is a way of avoiding having to fold the ribs. It's trying to substitute a rotation, rotation for a folding. So you take a breath in, as you breathe out, you aim the elbow towards the knee, the right elbow towards the left knee, using the breath, using, keeping the jaw nice and relaxed, and pressing that right leg down actively into the mat. Now, just pause, bring the right leg back to standing, and again, just as we did on the other side, just again, try to bring the elbow towards the knee with the right leg standing, and see, is that, does that make life easier to have the leg bent? Or is it easier to do this movement with the right leg long? And my experience, but it might be different for you, is that it makes it easier for me to fold the elbow towards the knee if I have that other leg long and pressing down. Now pause again and just take a, a rest for a moment. And then just roll the head and eyes again a little bit from side to side. And then um, once you have had your, the rest that you need, bring the legs back to standing. And bring your right leg back in towards you. And this time, bring both hands behind the back of the right thigh. Now, as you bring the hands behind the back of the right thigh, to, you reach the arms forward. Can you feel how the shoulders can come forward? If you allow the ribs to soften, already you can feel, ah, some part of my back is pressing down. But if you're keeping your ribs very held, held up, 
it will be harder to reach the hands behind the thigh. So allowing already those ribs to soften down can facilitate just bringing the hands into this position. And you'll perhaps also note that bringing the hands forward begins to shorten the back of the neck. The, ten the tendency is for the head to tilt back a little bit. So if, if, you've, if you're feeling that happening, think of bringing or tucking the chin in slightly and make sure that you're looking down, down towards your chest rather than up towards the ceiling. So you're looking down already to help lengthen the back of the neck and see can you begin to walk your hands up the back of the right leg and then walk the hands back down, bringing the head back down. So you're exploring can you walk your hands up the leg keeping it more or less vertical and then walk the hands back down. Now, it's really important each time you do this, you think about the organisation of the head and the vision. You see, if I don't think about it, and I'm looking at the ceiling, or even at the foot, and I begin to walk the hands up, can you see it causes my head to tilt back and the arch of the cervical spine to increase? So. I need to, before I begin to think of walking the hands up, I need to think of really lengthening the back of the neck by just tucking my chin in slightly so that when I lift the head, I'm looking down at my tummy rather than focusing on looking at the, at the feet, the foot. And when I come back down, I stay looking at my tummy, tummy until eventually I can release the head back down to peel the spine back down. So okay, just try again. So you bring the chin in, look at the tummy as you walk the hands up the leg, and then keep looking at the tummy, keeping the chin in as you walk the hands back down. So again, just pause, take a rest for a moment. <clears throat> Strong work. <laughs> to say the least. <clears throat> and then let's try with the left leg. So bring the left leg in towards you. Bring both hands, if possible, behind the back of the left leg. The right leg is standing. And again, really take your time to think about where you're looking, what you're doing with the chin. And so I'm, I'm trying, I'm preparing my head and neck for the lifting that comes as I walk the hands up my leg, trying to keep the leg vertical. So when I, my hands are near the foot, I'm looking not at the foot, I'm looking at my tummy. And then I keep looking at my tummy as I walk the hands back down. So again, just try a few more of these in your own time, just walking the hands up wherever you comfortably can. And you'll feel as the hands go higher, if you're managing to find the organisation of the head and neck, it means that your middle tummy, those middle ribs, are folding together to bring weight into the tummy area. You see, if you pull the leg in towards you, it means the weight is going to stay more towards the head. Whereas if you keep the leg vertical, it will be much a different part of the back that's pressing down into the floor. Pause and please again just take a, a brief rest. You'll love where this hopefully where this lesson is going to <laughs> you know, be learning a new party trick by the end of the lesson. Once you've had a rest and if you need to release the head and neck just roll the head and eyes a little bit from side to side, keeping the jaw nice and relaxed. And then bring your two legs back to standing. And this time, fold both legs in towards you. And bring the left hand behind the back of the left leg. 
and the right hand behind the back of the right leg, thigh. Again, to the degree that you can, lift the legs up towards the ceiling. And again, think of lifting the head in the way that we've been looking at. So, again, it's, it can be very easy as you try and lift the head to shorten the back of the neck and put strain there. So, I think of bringing the chin in, looking down towards my pubic bone or my navel, and then can you begin to walk each hand up its respective leg towards the feet, but looking at the tummy, and then walk the hands back down and bring the head back down. Say, so I think of chin in, looking down, and then as I walk the hands up, the head lifts, but, and still trying to keep the feet, the legs vertical, and boy, you can really feel this folding in the, in the middle, so that my weight is in the middle to lower part of the back, rather than pulling the legs in and shifting it towards the upper part of the spine, and walking the hands back down. Now, don't do too many strong position to hold the legs um, up like that. Pause and take a rest. One of the great uh, effects of these um, lessons that focus on the movements of your flexor muscles, the abdominal muscles, the muscles that fold you together, is as we learn to engage those muscles more efficiently, um, then the back muscles, the opposing muscles, begin to lengthen. See, if I contract my bicep muscle, this muscle here on my arm, um, the tricep muscle, the opposing muscle, lengthens. And if I contract my tricep, the bicep muscles lengthen. And as in this lesson, your back muscles are the opposing muscles to your abdominal and flexor muscles. And so as we learn how to engage these abdominal muscles more efficiently, then the side effect or the side benefit is that those back muscles that for so many people get very held and begin to lengthen and, and release. And when that happens, then you begin to actually rest into the floor. Whereas all too often people can be lying with their back towards the floor, but they're not actually resting into the floor. They're as though they're lying often on a bed of nails, whereas really we're looking for an organization where you can truly rest, rest. Please bring the legs back to standing and um, once more fold your right leg in towards you. Bring the two hands behind the back, behind the back of the thigh and this time lengthen your left leg as we did before. And see, can you think again how you're organising the neck and the head begin to walk your hands up the right leg, keeping that left leg long and pressing down into the mat, and then walk back down again. So, you bring the chin in, I'm looking at my tummy as I walk the hands up the left, uh, sorry, the right leg, but I'm trying to keep that left leg pressing down. And again, just asking, does having the leg long in that way make it slightly easier to climb up your right leg and then come back down. And my impression is it certainly does. Hopefully yours is too. too. But let's try that on the other side. So you bring the left leg in, bring the hands behind the back of the thigh, let your right leg go long. And again, take your time. So take a good breath in and see, can you walk the hands up? your left leg, left leg, but I'm looking at the tummy. If we look at the feet, it will be completely different. And then walk the hands back down. 
and as I'm walking up the leg in this way, walking the hands up, I'm trying to press my right leg down into the mat and then walk the hands back down. So again, it's really about can you coordinate the lifting of the head, the walking of the hands up in such a way that your middle folds, folds to assist you. Good. So don't do too many, take, take a rest. Life is suddenly going to get a bit more inter interesting uh, with the next next variation. So take as much rest as you need. And if you roll the head a little bit from one side to the other, please do so. And then once you've had a sufficient rest for you, then please bring the legs back to standing. Fold your right leg in towards you and lengthen it up towards the ceiling. Bring your two hands behind the right leg and then could you walk the hands once more in the way that we've been doing up the leg. Lift your left leg up towards the ceiling and then see can you throw the, leg, the left leg down towards the floor to bring you up to, up to sitting. And then to come back down, can you begin to lift the right leg, lift the right leg, but let your left leg linger. And as I'm lifting the right leg, keeping my hands where they are, again, I'm looking at my tummy. So I'm not looking forward, which would throw the head back. I'm looking at my tummy and see, can I let that left leg linger? To come onto my onto my back again. So just have a rest, <laughs> rest, and I'll show that show that again. So you bring the right leg in towards you. So bring the hands behind the back of the leg. Then think about walking the hands up the right leg. Bring your left leg in and up, and you need a slight swing of momentum to bring you up to sitting, but stay looking at your tummy. And then you think, can you control the return with that left leg dragging on the floor to bring you back up? And then you can begin to go again. So it's how you use your left leg that will help you to control this movement. So I roll back, trying to let that left leg linger, bring it up, and then swing it down to help bring me to sitting. So now you might discover, as you're doing this, that you're rolling a little bit off to the side, off to the off to the side which tells you something about the organisation of your back muscles. So just make sure, as you're exploring this movement, that you're breathing, keeping the jaw nice and relaxed. And so just discovering your own rhythm. See if you can, again, use the left leg to control the momentum. So it's a slow and controlled descent towards the back, but you're keeping yourself as folded as possible to roll onto the back. Isn't that fun? <laughs> um, they loved it in class this week, uh, so it's such a nice class to teach. Um, please come and rest on your back before we do the other, other side. I, uh, it was a nice lesson to teach in class also. My students have been doing amazingly well in the Zoom classes. We've been focusing quite a lot on the ability to fold in the middle in the earlier lessons that are on the, on the channel. And you began, begin to appreciate how this ability to organise your middle 
is the, is the secret or the key to so many other movements, whether it's rolling to the side or coming to sit. It's this ability to find the organisation through our middle. And so often, as we get older, is that um, people don't move from their middle. They've forgotten, in a way, how to organise their middle so that movement is through weight transference rather than trying to lift yourself up all the time. So pause. Please bring both legs back to standing. Fold your left leg in towards you. Lengthen it up towards the ceiling. Bring your two hands behind the back of the left leg. And thinking again about what you're doing with the chin and the eyes, can you walk your hands up the left leg, but stay looking at the tummy. Bring your right leg in and with a swing, see if you can throw it down towards the floor to bring yourself up to sitting. And then to come back, you think of uh, lifting the left leg, keep the chin tucked in, and that right leg drags to control the, the movement. It's as though your right leg is an anchor to help you come up to sitting and then to control your return so that you're not falling but returning to the back. Now it's interesting to me, I have an injury, um, to the, an old injury to the right hand side and I feel I'm just slightly less symmetrical in my return with the left leg lifted compared to the right. So I'm just going to take my time to explore that. Now pause, please, pause, please take a rest and come to lie on your, on your back. Good. Hopefully you had a lot of fun. There were a lot of smiling faces in my Zoom class this week when we, when we did this lesson. So. And don't worry if you don't get it the um, first time. It's, uh, if you're finding it a real struggle, then it may be the earlier parts of the lesson, the earlier variations that you need to work on first, first to um, um, uh, improve your ability to find this folding in the middle. Now, I have one more variation to do. You don't have to do it, of course, you don't have to do any of these variations, but I'll show it as it's part of the lesson. Please bring both your legs back to standing. Fold your right leg in and bring your right hand, <coughs> excuse me, your right hand behind the back of the thigh. Turn your face to the right and the back of the head to the left and bring your left hand behind the back of the head. Lengthen your right leg up towards the ceiling and bring your left leg in and um, uh, lengthen that up towards the ceiling. See if you can fold the left elbow towards the right knee and then think of coming up to sit, keeping that sense of the elbow towards the knee and the knee towards the elbow. And of course you, you slowly return and then come back up to sitting, slowly trying to control the return with your left leg and then you can use it to bring yourself up to sitting but you stay looking towards the right and then once you've explored that, getting into a rhythm, then please, please take a rest. <laughs> Do take care uh, at home. None of this is obligatory and of course if you um, uh, are experiencing discomfort then you know just simply don't do, do the lesson or don't do the variation. But let's try that if you are trying it on the other side. So bring the left leg in towards you, bring the left hand behind the back of the thigh, bring your um, turn your face to the left and the back of the head to the right 
bring your other hand, right hand around the back of the head to support the head. So you stay looking to the left. Lift your right leg in too, so it's ready and available to you to help with the movement. Take a breath in, and as you breathe out, bring the right elbow towards the left knee. See if you can keep it there as you bring yourself up to sitting, and then see can you slowly, slowly return, and then come back up to sitting. <laughs> Just find your own rhythm, making sure you're not holding the breath or clenching the jaw. And once you've explored that, please leave today and come and take a little rest. Oh, quite an <laughs> quite an active lesson. Um, uh, very interesting. When I ta I taught it on Tuesday this week to one of my um, Feldenkrais classes. And I had a lovely email back from one of my students who I thought actually wouldn't like the lessons so much, but in fact she absolutely loved it and wrote to me to tell me how much her back, how different her back felt at the end of the lesson. And uh, uh, maybe you're feeling such a difference yourself. Certainly I'm feeling this middle part of my back a lot softer, a lot further down, down into the floor. Think about those curves of the spine that we looked at at the beginning of the lesson, how your weight is distributed around the spine, and then just roll your head a little bit from side to side. And then um, pause, bring the legs to standing, and roll to one side to, to transition to sit and to stand. And I won't show it now just because of the camera angle, but when you do come to stand, just take a moment to notice how you feel in standing, how the weight is going down through the skeleton. Again, because we've been um, releasing some of those back muscles, you might suddenly discover you're a little bit longer or taller in standing as those back muscles have, and curves have begun to lengthen. Thank you very much. Uh, please uh, leave a comment below if you've tried the lesson, telling me how you got on. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, then please hit the subscribe button. Thank you very much.